I don't know what he's going to do, <laughs> but I'll tell you what Camille told me he's going to do. Uh, I may have to change what I'm going to do. to turn a forest of Christmas tree ornaments. Now, most of you already know that because you saw it on the email. But nonetheless, Dave, we welcome you and we're excited about what you're going to do. All right, thanks. So we'll just, we'll just break the suspense, and that's what we're going to make. Um, I don't have a bandsaw here, so I can't actually end up cutting them at the very end, but we're going to pretend that we can cut all these, and we're going to end up with probably between 40 and 50 Christmas trees um, with just a little bit of work. So that's what I really like about this project. Um, the way it works is we're going to turn a ring, a big ring, not like a finger ring, unless your finger's really big, uh, but a big ring, and then we'll be able to slice trees out of it. So that's how you get a little flat tree out of, off a of lake. So this is not my idea. Um, I did this, I saw an article online, and I did this a, couple, a few years ago, um, made a bunch of trees for gifts for people, and, and it worked out okay, and last year my wife said, oh, we need a bunch of things for a charity sale. And I'm like, okay, and I remembered how to do this, and so I, I knocked out a bunch of these trees, and, and we sold them for a, on a, at a charity table at a craft, craft show. Um, and then I decided to do this demo, and so I went and looked and to say, well, I'm gonna figure out where I got my, my original information, and it turns out it was uh, um, an article in October 2013, uh, American Winter. So if some of this looks familiar, it's because you've been reading and, and paying attention. Uh, so not my idea, but I kind of really like it, and hopefully I'll be able to give you a little bit of a few things. I do a few things slightly different than he did, and hopefully we'll find some other things interesting to, to talk about as we go. So to start out, I'll just say there's a little bit of a cooking show going on here because I don't have a bandsaw, and so we're going to kind of you know put something in the oven, and magically the next step is going to going to appear. So. Um, for this step, we can ignore this slot that's cut here, because that doesn't happen yet. Um, I went over here uh, last month and I picked up some, some wood. So this is just four quarter, this happens to be cherry, I've got some ash, really doesn't matter. Uh, mostly whatever you've got hanging around is probably really good for this. And this is about nine inches. So this was a nine inch plank, I cut it into square. I found the center, and then I cut it round on the bandsaw. Well, I cut it kind of round on the bandsaw. I'm not very good at round on the bandsaw, because I have a lathe to do that for me. <clears throat> and so the next step then, is I'm gonna mount this on the lathe, so I'm just jamming it between my chuck and uh, the tailstock. Let's see if it will go round. Yay! So now I want to cut, I want to, I want to mount this in the chuck. So I'm going to cut a tenon. The reason I'm cutting a tenon is because a tenon's a whole lot easier to cut with the tailstock here than trying to get back into a recess. Uh, so I'm just going to cut a little recess here, but the part what I'm actually going to use is the tenon. And, boy, I'm terrible at judging. There we go. Close. So I make these little things for all my chucks. So it's just a cheap piece of plywood. I dyed it blue um, based on a comment from who was Jason Breach at the last symposium. He had some things and he had blue zip ties on them. 
And he said, well, blue is the color you can see in all the sawdust, because none of your sawdust is blue. And so I went and took all my things and I dyed them blue, and sure enough, I can find them now when they fall on the floor, because plywood kind of blends in with all the stuff. My, the floor of my shop is kind of wood colored. And, uh, it moves around, but anyway. Um, so what I did was I took for each one of my chuck jaws, I just cut out a, a, a shape out of plywood, and I've got a point here, and I've got two. I marked them, instead of marking them with pen, I just cut a slot with a bandsaw. Can you see that? Is that working? Mm -hmm. All right. I just cut a slot with a bandsaw because it won't erase. <coughs> um, and then I can hold that up, and it's got a, a little round in it so I can get around the the tailstock or whatever. So I can figure out what, what size for either a tenon or a dovetail for each one of my jaws. So we pass that around. We can pass that around. It is very simple. So I'm gonna cut Ten in here. Oh, that was good. And then we can turn this around and get it in jaws. So all I did was normally you'd cut a you'd cut a, a tenon and then cut away all the rest of the wood. Well, there's no reason to do that as long as you can get a flat spot for your jaws to fit. You can, you can make that a recess in there. Just saves a little, saves a little wood. And what we're going to end up with is we don't use the middle of this. It's going to turn into something else. So that's all fine. Now what I want to do is um, make this flat. So this is all about not trusting woodcraft and the, and the quality of the wood. But actually, it's pretty good. So this is pretty flat, uh, because eventually, I'm gonna take two of these and glue them together. And so I want a nice flat glue surface, because if it's not flat, it's not gonna glue really well. So I'm just, yeah, hear that? I'm just gonna screw that up a little bit. And I only need about, about two inches of that outside rim really flat, because that's where our trees are going to live, is on the, like the outside two inches. So let me, let me go a little further, and then I'm going to not care so much. I just don't want the middle of this proud. I don't want this sticking out, so I'm going to kind of recess that just a little bit. Just to, just to get it out of the way. I'm going to do a little better job than that, though. I mean, I don't really need to make a bowl here or anything, but I, I don't want this, when I end up gluing the other piece on, I don't want it rocking. So I'm just going to make that a nice recess. I'm pretty happy with that until I measure it. And I'm still happy with it. So it's not perfect, but I've got a, I'll have an opportunity to fix that up right before I glue things together. <clears throat> so now comes part of the magic of this thing. Um, well, okay, normally, oh, this is part of the cooking show thing. Uh, normally, I would be uh, now moving on and doing this a second time exactly what I did, doing it a second time. Uh, but to kind of save time, and since we've got, you know, no bandsaw and, I, you know, opportunity to, to skip some stuff, what I would do is I would do that second one, and then I've got two discs that I've, that I've flattened 
the middle of it. And now I want to, I want to align my grain. Okay, it's not critical, but um, in the end, when you, when you have a tree, if you're making something symmetrical like a tree, it, it'd be nice that the grain was kind of matching on either side. So that's all that's for. So it's not a real critical step, but I like to do it. So I'm going to get them where I want them, and I'm going to mark them so that I know the same, so I know how they align with each other. Then I can take this off, and it's been marked right here. You can almost see where it was marked, because it's got a hole in it. Um, <laughs> and I've made some little templates, which we're gonna sh I'll show you in a second, out of just some quarter inch plywood. And so, I, what I did at home was I set that plywood on there, aligned it with the center hole and where I wanted it on the outside, and I marked it. And then I cut a slot on the bandsaw. So we over the bandsaw, and bzz, bzz, we cut, and we got a slot that our quarter inch plywood fits. So now the magic of this thing, I showed you this already, we're going to cut out the inside, and then we're going to glue those two pieces together, and then we're going to cut the outside. And so the magic of this is, well, let me tell you what I did the first time I did these. Like I said, about three or four years ago, I did these once. I read this article, and I said, well, that's a good idea, but I'm smarter than that. And so I just made little templates out of cardboard that I'd cut a little and I'd jam in. And the trees I ended up make, making, I went and looked at them again last week, and there's, there's, I was aiming for an eighth of an inch around the whole tree, and some of them were about a quarter, and some of them were about, I don't know, almost, <clears throat> almost as small as a 30 second. I mean, they were just, it was not very even. Um, and it was not a relaxing operation. Because <laughs> I'd spent all this time, and I'd glued the thing together, and I'd waited overnight for the glue to dry, and, and then I start cutting on the outside, and I can't remember what I'd done on the inside because it was the next day, and it was a little bit stressful. So this next step kind of removes all of that stress, and I think it's, it's kind of the genius of this whole thing. Let me see how I'm doing this. Okay. So what we've made is I made some templates, just some drawings, and I printed, a, I copied a bunch of copies and, and printed them all out. Then I got some of that, that plywood. Um, you, you don't have to use plywood, you can use just kind of anything, it doesn't have to be a quarter inch, it can be whatever you want, whatever you got laying around. And I just use spray glue to glue those patterns on. And then probably the trickiest part of this whole operation is cutting out these patterns and still being able to count to 10 when you're done. <laughs> so I, I used a bandsaw, you could use a coping saw, you could use, you know, really it doesn't matter, anything you can cut out these patterns on. My suggestion is if you're gonna cut on a power saw, that you leave yourself a handle that you can hold on to as you're cutting, because there's a lot of really small cuts in here. And leave yourself a handle to hold on to and cut the handle off last. That's kind of... <laughs> um, the other thing that works really well is the, this push stick that I keep in my pocket. So this, this side's kind of sticky and will hold on to things. And if I cut this in the bandsaw, I've got more of them. <laughs> I've got more than 10. Let me put it that way. So, so that works out okay. Support your local paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, bleeding is easy, Todd. <laughs> Alright, so that's next. So then we end up with, after I cut them out, I end up with these little with these little trees, well, little half trees. Uh, one half goes in each half of the, um, of the discs that I'm doing. 
and I can use these as a guide. As I'm cutting the rings, if I cut into this, I know I've gone far enough. If I cut into it a long way, I know I need to reverse and go back. So that's what the reverse on the lay is for. <laughs> Here, pass those around. So we're going to glue one of those in now. Get on with this. We're on a table. So this is the side that I flattened. And this is just kind of habit. I've started using wax paper for gluing things because glue doesn't stick to it. Great. Um, one of the things I did, so like I said, I made another ring. The other half of this I've already made. I've already done the inside out. And I glued the, the template in. So when I glued that template in, I marked the other one. Because I kind of matched them up, I held them up. As this comes around, if you hold it up and you look, they may not match exactly right. Because, you know, I'm not a great at cutting to the line, so. Um, so anyway, I picked one that I liked, and so that's this one. And I want that to go in here, just like so. So the trunk is on the, oh wait a minute, okay, we've skipped a step. I'm going to continue talking and then we're going to go back and do the step I skipped. Because this is not, this is not the same, I didn't true up the outside edge of this. And that's important because the, the tree registers on that outside edge. So, it's kind of easier to do when you're doing all the steps together, when you're trying to push stuff in the middle. So anyway, I'm going to glue this in after I true this, the outside edge of this up. And, um, with the outside of the trunk, on the outside of the ring, and then flush with this flat spot I've made here. So let me take care of that efficiency I just pointed out. So I can stick this one on here. And because each of these very conveniently has both of them, <coughs> Tenon for the chuck and a and a hole, a divot from the tailstock. I can easily line them up. And I'm going to line up the, the slots just because I'm a little pedantic about some things. And then we can make these the right way right there. Visual. Dave. Yes, sir. If you didn't line up the grain, how many of them, uh, the grain, how many of them do you think would be in one piece by the following season? So if you didn't line up the grain, how many, so I think they'd all stick. If you do? I don't think that, I mean, as small as these things are, and they're all, well, a lot of them are just ingrained pieces. I, I don't, and they're only glued you know, here and here. I don't think wood movements really are in here. Okay. I think they all, the ones I've, I've got, a bunch of them and they all stick. The main reason I line up the grain is just because I feel like it's a good thing to do, more than anything. <laughs> so. But I don't think we're gonna, I don't think we'd lose any because of it. Because they're not gonna fight each other. Yes. 
you made it black so you could actually see it when you hit it? Yeah, we were going to say that, but you're right. Very good. So when I made these templates, uh, I mean, you could use a magic marker or a Sharpie. I just hit them with spray paint because it was easy. So th this edge of the template, I've painted. So that when I cut into it, I can see that I've cut into it. So that's kind of the, the indicator. And the problem with glue is that it's glue. <laughs> yeah, we may have to. Well, I've got a knife. Yep. All right. Now it's going to come out like crazy. But it comes out. All right. So we can glue this in. And so I want the end of the trunk of the tree flush with the outside edge of the disc and flush with this flat face I made, and the top of the tree flush with the flat face. Well, that's hard to say. Because these two spots right here are going to become our glue surface. The top of the tree and the bottom of the trunk. And I'm going to think, okay, that was, that is coming out quite, well, that's probably enough. So, we'll go with that. All right, <clears throat> so while that's kind of setting up, I, I have a problem with patience. So um, my natural instinct is just to spray that and move on. <clears throat> but I do know that when I spray the CA glue, it mostly just gets the surface. And so I really don't like it splattering in my face. So I'm going to try and be patient and let it set for a little bit so that hopefully it hardens all the way. And while we're doing that, I'm going to point out that of course trees are not the only thing you can make like this. <clears throat> Pretty much anything you can figure out. So I was kind of thinking, I decided for this demo to go with something I've done before because I thought that might be a good idea uh, because winging it is, I don't, well, I don't know, probably more fun. But you know, I thought maybe we could do angels, or we could do stars, or hearts. Um, the left and right side of this don't have to be the same. You know, you could do a Santa profile with a big fat belly and whatever. Um, so pretty much anything that you can sketch out and draw and, and cut into a little template and glue in like this, and you'll be able to see what, what this gives us. So I think we can, uh, you know, we can use our imagination. And now I'm going to spray a little stuff just to make sure. All right, so, oh, this one's sitting right here. This is what we're going to do next. So this is the inside of the trees. I'm going to cut out this area that's not tree. It's as simple as that. If it's not tree, we're going to cut it. Oh, well, it was tree and then it became plank, and now it's, if it's not true, all right, you got to stay away. <laughs> all right, everybody following what we're doing here? So you're cutting both sides of this? Yes, eventually we're going to cut both sides of this. Uh, for now, I'm only going to cut what's going to end up being the inside. I've already done it on one ring, so these are eventually going to mate like this. So I've already cut the inside on this half, and I'm going to do this one now. So the way I like to do these is, yeah. Oh, yes. If you just make 
take one half and you cut that in half and glue the two halves together, would you circumvent the yeah, he might be able to do that. Make, make, do, do both sides of a ring, slice it in half, fold them over, and glue them together. I don't see why that wouldn't work. It would be a sort of off center with the return to the outside. Yeah, I mean, it should stay, you should be able to do that. I'm going to go with you should be able to do that. <laughs> and so you're going to bring those in at the Christmas party, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I want to know where. Where I'm going here. So I'm going to just make a couple of marks. <clears throat> so I've marked kind of where the trunk is and where the tip of the tree is. And this is the part that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to start. Hang on. I find this kind of convenient to do just to kind of get my mind straight. Okay, I'm going to start by cutting a little bit here and a, a lot relatively out here. And what I'm looking for are the, apparently I can't cut and talk. What I'm looking for are the tips of those branches, I did get a little glue on my arm. And I'm almost there. So I'm just trying to cut down and find the tips of those branches right now. There turns out there's a lot of uh, starting and stopping delay that going on. All right, I'm pretty close. And so I've got right there is one tip, one of the branch. There's another. And there's the third. So now I kind of know where things are. So if I bring my, let me get one that's black on this side. If I bring my pattern up, I've marked that spot, and that spot, and that spot. Hopefully you can see that. And now I just need to clean out in, in between the branches. And so, I made some little tools. And I'll tell you about my little tools in a little bit. But, At this point, I'm just kind of guessing at where that branch is, and then I turn off the lathe and I see how badly I've done, and I went a little too far, actually. Look at that. Well, that's interesting. That will end, that will become quite an interesting thing. I, every time I've done this, I've been very conservative, and, and, I, and I, it takes three or four times to get in. It's of course, you know, here. <laughs> We're just going to go right for it and get everything out of there. On. Hello. Thank you. So I'll do the next one. I'll try to be a little more... Um... Yeah, that's more like what I was... Wanting, which is, I'm not there yet. see or feel that template in here. Do you want a light, Dave? We can get you a light. No, I can't. Did you hear what I just said? I cannot see or feel what I'm doing. 
No. <laughs> no, so, so I have to stop the lathe and see what I've done. You know, so I can't, it would be nice if you could put something in there and, and be able to actually see what you were doing as you were doing it. Um, so when someone figures that out, they can have the next demo. So every time I'm, so I'm just cutting to where I think, I guess where I think the line ought to be. Probably one way to look at it. And I'm going to try and be... Alright, so you can see, here's a good one, you can see how right here, I've cut just into that paint that I put on the edge of that template. So I can see I can cut a little more on this edge of that one, but the bottom is pretty good. So the paint on the edge of that really does give you something that you can see. So these tools are just little scrapers, but Well, I better, I better finish what I'm doing and then I'm talk because it just doesn't work the other way. All right, so I have not cut into that paint, but I'm actually pretty close to where I want to be there. Dave, are you worried about the little bit of tear off you I'm not. Um, So the question was, I'm worried about the, the tear out, because I am getting a little tear out here. Um, especially right here where I kind of got a little aggressive and on this other side. Um, I've kind of figured on, on these that, at least for, maybe this is cheating, but the style I'm going for, a little rustic is okay. <laughs> you know? so. Well, yeah, the tree has needles, so, sure. If you made those templates out of steel, you made the steel one. That's true. That's true. I am not going to repeat that comment for the camera. Alright, so these tools I'm using, let's see if I'm I got a little, little string there to get rid of. You know, Dave, if you made that Christmas tree out of acrylic, you'd also be able to smell it. You'd be able to smell when you got to that. <laughs> That's true. I think there are a lot of opportunities for improvement here. So, to me, um, so bear with me here for a little bit. These tools, in my mind, uh, represent, to me, why I come to these club meetings and why do I go to our symposium. Last year, 17, at our symposium, at our symposium we had Eric Lofstrom. Now, the, the talk that he gave was a lot about using the skew and balance and, and all of this stuff. And at the very end, he mentioned, oh yeah, and I made these skews. And then I, I went home and made one. So he has this skew that he, that he kind of got to that's round. So this has nothing to do with the trees, but you know the problem with a skew is if it's sitting on your tool rest at an angle and you start to cut on the top of the skew, it'll slap itself down on this tool rest. Well, this one just rolls. So it's kind of genius. Has nothing to do with these. The part, here's, part, here's what I love about going to symposiums is you you come up with something that probably the demonstrator didn't intend you to to pick up. So he he mentioned just kind of offhand that well you can make these out of drill bits. And so that's what I did with these other little scrapers that I made is I went to the hardware store 
I got one of those long drill bits. This one actually conveniently says it's M2 high speed steel. Right? Um, now, I'm sure that they don't treat the whole thing, right? But they also don't stop exactly at the bottom of the drill bit. So I cut off the, the drill bit part, the fluted part. So, so this skew had a drill bit right there, cut it off, and I've got a little bit of good steel that I can use. I mean, reasonable steel, at least. We, we could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, reasonable steel there uh, to use for, for tools. And one of the things that I like to do is, when there's an opportunity, is make it Make a tool of the task, and I got to looking at cutting these teeny little things out of here, and I thought, man, I need a teeny little scraper. And I've got a drawer full of old garage sale tools and stuff that I've ground all kinds of things on in the past, um, but these work a lot better, and they hold an edge, actually, where like a screwdriver doesn't hold an edge very well. You can grind all kinds of shapes on the end of a screwdriver, but it just doesn't seem to hold up. I don't know why. Um, all right, so I'm going to call that. I haven't cut all the way down to the to the paint on all of this, but I can feel I can feel that I'm flush. So I'm happy with that, and it's just a tree, so nobody cares. And when we're done, we're going to cut that out, and nobody's going to see it. So we can cheat. I do want to get rid of, I've got a little feather. One thing I found about this really, really pointed um, scraper is that it, it, it just likes to cut on that very tip. Um, so I made these tools for this project. Um, but I found myself using them I've, been, I've used this one a couple of times to clean up the bottom of some beads that I've made in, in things. It was like I just couldn't quite, with my gouge, get down in the bottom of the bead. And so just a little bit of scraping with the point of this and it, and it cleaned it up really nicely. So they were for trees, but they've turned into a much more general use tool for me. Okay, there, we've cut the bottom. And magically, uh, out of the other I pulled the other one, um, which you've already seen. So the next step is to glue these two guys together. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take them both off the lathe. I'm not gonna do it, because uh, you don't wanna watch glue dry. It's not a good demo. So I'm gonna take them off, well maybe it would be. Can we all, we can, maybe next year, watching glue dry. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to take them off the lathe, and I'm going to I'm going to put put glue around the rim here, and actually I glue the whole center, even though I kind of dished it out a little bit. I still want glue in there because once I cut these, once I cut this ring off, I'd like to not have those pieces come flying apart. So that's all that glue is for. The thing to watch out for with the glue is to be careful about squeeze out. So I try and put just the right amount of glue here and not get it to dop down into the, to the tree branches. And I put the right amount of glue around the edge. Because if you get squeeze out, it's gonna be on the inside of here and you can't clean it up. And then the next step that you'd have opportunity to clean up your squeeze out is when you have 40 or 50 of these things laying on your bench. And then you're in here cleaning the squeeze out like that. And I don't know, to me, glue squeeze out doesn't add to the rustic look I'm going for. So. The way I clamp these together, I just use uh, wood glue, PDA, white glue, tight bond, whatever you call it. So once I get the glue on, I'm gonna press 
them together on the lake, but this is not my clan. Because this is putting pressure in the middle, and I want the tree to be glued, and it's out here on the edge. So I used the lathe to align the two pieces and hold them, and then I put clamps around the outside edge. I use five clamps. Anybody know why I use five clamps? That's how many I have, that's right. <laughs> All right, so then after our glue drying demo, We've got a ring that looks like this, where all that work we did is now missing. <laughs> so we can't see it. Um, what we're gonna do next is pretty much exactly what we did just now on both sides. I've done one just because I felt like it was gonna take too long. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna chuck this in the, in the lathe. And we're going to turn, turn away the outside of the tree. And we're going to look at my notes to see if there wasn't something I was going to... Dale, yeah. uh, how, how far down to the point of the tree did you go there? Um, oh, okay. That's a good point. Um, great. We're doing it. <laughs> so on this back side that you can't see because I've mounted in here. I, I cut the tip of that tree down just to where I could see the blue line. So I didn't want to overcut it because um, I want to be able to know where it is when I come back from, from this side. So that's the last step we're going to do is to cut, cut away that tip of that tree and release that ring. But until then, we get to play with this a little more. And I'm going to try and at least roughly mark. What I've tried to mark is not the tip, but kind of that last branch. I don't want to go too far down. Um, I don't want to cut this off until I've finished shaping it. And I'm also going to take a glance at where, how far that outside branch is. So that's about right there. out of this is that was cherry or this is ash so in case that's important to you all right I'm going to cut away a little more of this I've, I've almost hit the top of the branches there. And just to kind of pick up on a, on a point that I didn't make. Uh, um, so I choose to make these, these little tools. But you can do this. 
you can do this without you know specialized tools, even though they're pretty simple to make. Um, you can uh, you know you could you could use a, a small scraper or the side of a skew or a gouge to get into a lot of these. Um, you could you could also choose a different pattern that would be easier to cut. That might be the first step. All right, so I have marked the tips of those branches that I can see there's still another branch down in here, but I'm not ready to get there yet. So I'm just gonna cut in between these. I'm gonna look. Just to remind myself what I look like. See how close we are. Oh man. Pretty good. I'm surprised. So I just, these things, I just sharpen them like scrapers, so I couldn't tell you what angle I put on because I, whoop, because I don't know. That sharp one is a little bratty. Right at the tip. So I just cut out of like some press board. I cut out the, the tree pattern and I was sitting here, you know, making cuts and sticking that in and making cuts and sticking that in. And it seemed like, you know, I was improving on the process, but it wasn't. Just usually the way it goes. All right, 
I'm happy with those two branches. And I want to find this one. This is the part where I ought to be careful. I've got one more, one more little branch here that I can cut out. And then we're cutting the tree up, we're cutting the top of the tree off. I really like the remote on this lathe. You guys have it. So I've got the B model of this lathe. If anybody have a powermatic fit? Okay, you can do this on your lathe. You need a box, which you get from the electrical supply at the hardware store, and a cable, and you take the control out of the headstock, and you put it in the box, and you run the wires to where they were before, and you put a magnet on the back, and you can remote your, your remote control on your lady. I did it on my jet, I've done it on my Powermatic. All I did was I pulled the control out of the headstock, put it in a box, Rewired it up with a long cable, like trailer wire, trailer brake cable, you know, whatever. And you can have your, so I do, you know, when I'm doing large holes and rough turning stuff, I really don't want to reach around a chunk of tree that's flopping around to turn the lathe off. So I really think that's a, a and I'm glad they did it on this lathe. And the other thing that they did that I wish I had is they made the sides of these beds flat so it sticks. The 3520B, the, the bed is like this, and nothing will stick to it because it's not flat. So, you know, I stick it on, you know, here, or here, wherever. Uh, sometimes I stick it on the headstock. Anyway, so I'm really used to having this right here, and I really like it. And I was turning something this morning, and I noticed that, I, without even thinking about it, I was just leaning on that big red stop button with my thigh, you know, because it's like, oh, I want it off, like, you know. So it was great. Anyway, just an aside, if you want to do that, I'll be happy to talk to you how to do that, because I think it's an important safety feature. All right, I think, I have these, so I didn't cut, oh, let me cut away to the, let me get that one, a little better, a little better, I can always do a little better. So even though I have this template in here with the paint on it, and I know exactly when I've gotten to the right spot, I still get kind of skittish about going all the way and cutting the paint off. I'm flush right there, though. I have not cut the top of the tree. So I have not yet cut this part right here. I've cut between those branches and those and those, and I've not done the, the trunk yet. So I'm going to do that next back here. Let's turn this around, I suppose. And why not help ourselves a little bit. Oh, I don't even need that. It comes right 
This branch comes right almost to where I've cut there. And then the bottom of that branch is kind of arced a little. I like to remind myself of what it looks like. the tips of these these branches to kind of get rid of some of that tear out and just make them a little less sharp. Um, you know I'd probably I wouldn't spend a lot of time at it because even with a little bit of a little bit of tear out once you cut it you know kind of thin you're, you're not going to notice much. And these are just little trinkets anyway, so I'm not too picky about them. All right, so now I want to cut off the tip of the tree. So I have cut down on, let's just take this off so I can point at something. When I did the first side of this, I cut that top branch and, and you should be able to see right there is the blue line where the two pieces came together. So I've cut this slope all the way down right to the middle. And then I stopped. Because when I cut from the other side, I don't want to be guessing at where, where I need to be. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut down that top branch of the tree and we'll end up releasing that ring because of that last thing. I'm going to pull the tailstock up. 
So I'm not expecting this center thing to fly off or anything because I glued it on. But I don't want this ring, once I release it, to roll across the shop. Because then I'd have to go chase it and I'm lazy. Maybe some other reason, I don't know. Maybe I'd have to then make another one. So part of doing this is kind of, you know, you cut a little and you look and then you kind of adjust your trajectory, right? You know, aim a little, your aim's a little off. So. And I also want to make sure that I've cut the, cut the part I want to cut because as soon as I cut that topper off, I'm done. So I don't want to, okay, I've got a little ways to go. I'm going to clear out some of this excess right here. And they look a little goofy. 
because the top of the tree is big and the trunk is really little. And it's just, so, whatever, so if you decide to go with another pattern, think about that. That when you're done, the bottom is going to be thicker than the top. Um, I don't measure these. I just start slicing them. The one thing that I discovered for me is it really helps. All right, I'm going to bring this over. I put a line. So I, this is actually a board that I use to build a zero clearance uh, insert for my bandsaw. I've got a zero clearance insert on my bandsaw, but it doesn't have zero clearance anymore because I cut big logs and stuff and the blade just and so, um, it was a zero clearance insert when it was new. So I put a small blade on my bandsaw and then I, cut, I put this on the table and cut it in. And so I have now no place for these to drop through as I cut them off. Because, yeah, it'll cut straight and it'll cut smooth and then they won't, they don't fall through the bandsaw and get jammed in the blade and all that nasty stuff that happens all the time. Um, the other thing that I do is I draw a line with a pencil kind of straight with the blade because I found that for some reason as I'm cutting these I eventually start cutting like this. I'm not cutting pie wedges anymore, I'm cutting straight slices. And then, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, those trees looked okay, but now this next one, to kind of get back on track, looks pretty awful. So that goes in the firewood pot. So the, the little line here just kind of helps me line things up as I'm cutting them. I don't measure the width, I just kind of cut and whatever looks good. Uh, but the line kind of helps keep me on track as I go around. All right, so that disc, the ring that we made, was about nine inches in diameter. All right, so what's the circumference of that all the way around? <laughs> yeah, nine times pi, nine times three, 27 inches and change, right? If I make these, Half an inch thick at the base, I'll get 54, well, potentially 54 out of it. If I make it a little thinner, I'll get more. So that simple little thing that we did, two pieces of scrap plank wood that you got laying around, a little bit of cleverness with the, with the templates, and you can probably get 50 trees out of there. Don't get all of them. <laughs> you don't want all of them. Once you get down, this is a leftover from one of them I did a, few, a while ago. Once you get down about this far, you've got finger problems. <laughs> or, well, so the, the real problem with this is it's not stable on the table. When it's when it's in a ring, it's got enough to sit stable on the table. That rhymes and I did not mean it to you. <laughs> but once you get down small enough, it's rocking. And rocking with a bandsaw is a disaster. It's a recipe for our EMT friends to be visiting us. So, shop tours are one thing, but Todd, not. Yeah. Um, so once you get down small enough, um, and hopefully the little voice in your head will tell you when you've gotten there, but when you don't have enough to hold on to anymore, that's time to stop. I found another reason to do that. <clears throat> I'll put these out, like I said, I had a craft show. There was a craft show last year, and my wife wanted a whole bunch of these, so I made about 90 of these trees for them to put up on their, their display and sell for charity. 
And I had the booth next door. And so I had one of these sitting there. So that when people asked, how did you make these? I had at least enough of, a, of an arc left over that I could describe what I'd done and how I'd made them. So I think this piece, while saving your fingers, also becomes kind of a conversation piece. And so it's kind of useful to, useful to keep it. And then eventually it burns really well, so it's fun. <laughs> um, let's see, I had a couple other things I wanted to... Can I interrupt real quick? You can. Bomb cars is locking up their parking lot. If you parked over there, you might want to move your car. Or you can move it tomorrow, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's pass this around so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. I think that was it. Have you done any other shapes? I have not yet done any other shapes, but so I was when I was preparing for this, I wanted to do something else, but I kind of decided that I should go with what I've done before. Um, a heart would be really good for February. Um, you know, easy and. Uh, you know, I like the I like the idea of an angel or a Santa. Um, star kind of might be a little little tough, uh, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, just think about it. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. You know, you could have a Santa profile with a big, you know, on a bag on his back or whatever. Um, you know, as long as you can sketch something out and and find a place where you can divide the inside from the outside. You know, the one side could be. These were both inch thick boards, but you know, one could be from you know eight quarter and one from two quarter, you could make something a lot bigger. So I think the possibilities are there. Um, once I end up making, so I'm done with these and I'll have about you know 120 to 150 trees. And I think I'll be done with this for a few months. <laughs> um, to be honest, all of these are gonna get taken home, finished, cut up. I've got a craft show in a week and a half uh, at the Stanley Hotel up in Estes. And they're gonna go in a bowl on the table with a suggested donation, I'm gonna give all the money to the Blue Santa program up there, which is the police department kind of helping people that need help at Christmas. So, just a little something for people that are coming by that don't wanna spend more on a bowl, they can throw a couple of dollars and come go home with something. If some kid wants one, I'm just going to give them to them. So. Do you paint them or stain them? Or? Uh, so, uh, finishing, that's a good question. Uh, I may take some of them, depending on how rough the... Some of these, as I was cutting them, got burned um, by the bandsaw blade. Uh, probably because I was using the wrong blade, a big blade. Like, I don't really have like a three-tooth per inch blade on my saw. So... Um, they got, some of them got burned, so I'll take them and I'll put, uh, I'll glue a piece of sandpaper down and I might kind of sand them a little bit on those faces for the, if they got cut marks on them from the saw. And then I take a piece of twine and I string it up across my shop and I string them all on the twine and I spray them with something, like lacquer or shellac, whatever, gravel can, something I have. But I'll just string up a big string across the shop and hang them all on the twine. And then I just walk down the road with a can of, give them a couple of coats of, of something. But I'm kind of going for rustic. Um, that's my personal thing, because I'll, I'll hang them on, on twine, just make a little loop of twine. Well, I've got one in here with So I'll just make a little loop of twine to hang them on. Instead of wire or, you know, Gold bead, whatever. I don't know. Um, I think that looks kind of, kind of country. So, um, but I mean, you can do anything you want. But that's what I do. Um, any other questions? Great. Thank you.